we will now solve a few differential equations that have discontinuous forcing terms. We'll start with the simple differential equation y double prime plus y equals 0 for t between 0 and 2 and 1 for t greater than or equal to 2. And we can represent this function using a heavy side function h of t minus 2. In order to solve this differential equation, we're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides. So we're going to do the Laplace transform of y double prime plus the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of h of t minus 2. So that becomes s squared times y minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. And then we're going to add the Laplace transform of y, which is capital Y. And then the Laplace transform of h of t minus 2 is going to be e to the minus 2s. Now y of 0 is 1, and y prime of 0 is 2. So this gives us s squared plus 1 times capital Y is going to equal s plus 2, bringing those over to the other side, plus e to the minus 2s. So y is going to equal s plus 2 plus e to the minus 2s all over s squared plus 1. We may want to rewrite this as s over s squared plus 1 plus 2 times 1 over s squared plus 1 plus e to the minus 2s times 1 over s squared plus 1. OK. Now, let's find little y of t by using inverse Laplace transforms. Okay, the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 1 is cosine t using our chart, plus 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 1, which is sine t. And then I have an e to the minus 2s times the 1 over s squared plus 1. So that transforms into an h of t minus 2 because of the e to the minus 2s, and then times sine because we're taking the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 1. And instead of t, I'm going to put t minus 2. And so that is our solution to our differential equation. Now, we're going to want to plot these solutions to the differential equations. So I'm going to open up Desmos because that's a good place to split to plot these solutions. So I want you to notice that here I've defined the Heaviside function h of t to be when t is less than 0, be 0, and when t is greater than or equal to 0, to be 1. So you're going to need that definition if you want to plot these in a, in a program such as Desmos. Now I've plotted h of x minus 2. You're going to need to use the x variable here because Desmos likes to plot y versus x. So I plotted h of x minus 2. That is my forcing term. That's the red line, which is 0. And then all of a sudden, it turns on at 2. And then you'll notice I plot my solution. And when I plotted my solution, it starts as kind of one curve. And then there's a kink right where the Heaviside function turns on. And then it kind of turns into a different curve. And we can. Uh, zoom out a little bit to see that it's just going to continue to oscillate forever based on actually that that uh, forcing term. Okay, let's get back to solving some differential equations. Okay, now let's do a slightly different problem. This is y double prime plus y equals 2t from 0 to 1 and then 2 afterward. I just want to show you what this looks like because essentially what we're saying is, is that between t equals 
zero and one, we're gonna linearly grow to two, and then we're gonna let it be two afterwards. Okay, so that's what our forcing term is gonna look like. Okay, now uh, let's uh, solve this differential equation by taking uh, Laplace transforms of both sides. In order to do that though, I'm gonna to need to rewrite that, uh, that discontinuous forcing term using heavy side functions. So it starts as 2t, and then what I wanna do is shut off the 2t, so I'm gonna subtract 2t times h of t minus one. And then I'm gonna to wanna to turn on two, so that's plus two times h of t minus one. Okay, I wanna rewrite that, that's gonna be two t, and then that ends up being minus two times t minus one times h of t minus one, if I factor out a minus two. And now you can see my function is in the form I need it to be, a function of t minus one times h of t minus one. Okay, now I'm going to uh, take the Laplace transform. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room here to do that. Okay, taking the Laplace transforms of, of both sides, I'm going to get s squared times y minus sy of zero and minus y prime of zero plus y, that's the Laplace transform of little y, and that's gonna equal the Laplace transform of the right-hand side. The Laplace transform of 2t is two over s squared. And then the Laplace transform of two times t minus one times h of t minus one. Okay, that's gonna be a minus two for the constant. It's gonna be an e to the minus s for the t minus one. And then finally, that's gonna be times a one over s squared for the Laplace transform of t. All right, now we're gonna get uh, s squared plus one times y, and then we notice that the initial conditions are gonna be zero. So the only thing that's driving this system is gonna be that forcing term, okay? And that's gonna equal, if we wanna write it this way, we could write it as two times one minus e to the minus s over s squared so that y is equal to 2 times 1 minus e the minus s over s squared times s squared plus 1. Now we're going to write that as 2 times 1 minus e the minus s times a over s squared plus b over s squared plus one. This time I'm gonna go ahead and do those partial fractions just in case. Okay, so we're gonna get a gets multiplied by s squared plus one, plus b is gonna get multiplied by s squared, and that equals one. That tells me that a plus b is equal to zero because there are no s squared terms on the right-hand side and a equals one. So putting those things together, I get that b must be minus one. So we finally have that y of s is equal to two times one minus e to the minus s over s squared plus 2 times 1 minus e to the minus s over s squared plus 1. So we need to take inverse Laplace transforms. So what is y of t going to be? y of t is going to be 2t. That is the inverse Laplace transform of the 2 times 1 over s squared. Okay, and then I wanna take the inverse Laplace transform of the two times e to the minus s over s squared. So that's going to be a minus two 
times t minus 1 times h of t minus 1. Okay, that gives us the first term. So what I just did was I just took the inverse Laplace transform of this piece with the 2. Okay, now let's move on to the next piece. So then I get a 2 over s squared plus 1. Okay, so that is going to be a... Oops, I've made a little mistake here. Uh, y of s because b was minus 1 has a minus sign there. Sorry about that. Okay, so then it's going to be a minus 2 times sine of t. That's what happens when I take the Laplace, inverse Laplace transform of the 2 over s squared plus 1. And now I got to do the other term and that has another minus sign on it. So that becomes a plus 2 times Sine or sine of t minus one times h of t minus one. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite that so that it looks a little bit nicer. That's going to be two t minus two sine t, and then I'm going to do a minus two heavy side of t minus one. And what's left when I do that is a t minus 1 minus sine of t minus 1. Okay, so that is our solution. Again, we might want to plot that in something like Desmos. Okay, so what I've done is, is I plotted first what the uh, forcing term looks like. Again, we saw that. The function starts at zero, it goes up to two, and then it stays at two for the rest of time. And then when I plugged in my solution, then that is what uh, the solution looks like. So it oscillates, it seems, I guess, between a little bit more than zero and a little bit less than four for the rest of time, which is kind of interesting. Okay, let's look at our final example. Oh, we wanna solve the initial value problem, uh, y double prime plus 4y equals sine of t plus h of t minus pi sine of t minus pi. Okay, so we're going to do s squared times y minus s of times y of 0 minus y prime of 0. And that's going to be the Laplace transform of y double prime plus 4 times the Laplace transform of y. And that's going to equal the Laplace transform of sine of t, which is 1 over s squared plus 1. And then I'm going to add to that h of t minus pi times sine of t minus pi. I want to take the Laplace transform of that. And that's going to be e to the minus pi times s times 1 over s squared plus 1. Okay, so the point is, is that I need to take the Laplace transform of both sides uh, so that I can then solve that algebraic equation. Okay, I'm going to plug in the initial conditions. Okay, y of 0 is 0, and y prime of 0 is 0. That's going to make my problem just a little bit easier to solve now. Okay, I'm going to make one little adjustment. Uh, I meant to put a minus sign right here. So I'm going to adjust the problem just a little bit. And so that's going to actually... Uh, all that's going to do is put a minus sign right here. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and solve this problem. So we're going to get s squared plus 4 times y 
is going to equal, and it looks like it's just one minus e to the minus pi s over s squared plus one. So we can get that y of s, I can actually write it like this. So we're gonna get y of s is gonna equal one minus e to the minus pi s over s squared plus four times s squared plus one. And we wanna rewrite this using partial fractions. So that's gonna be one plus e to the minus pi s, excuse me, that's a minus, times a over s squared plus four, plus b over s squared plus one. Now some of you might think I need to put a s plus b and c s plus d on the top of those, but there are no single s terms, so this is gonna work out just the way that I've done it. Okay, so the partial fractions tells me a times s squared plus one plus b times s squared plus four is supposed to equal one. And so I get that a plus b, which is multiplied by s squared, is supposed to be zero. And then I'm gonna get a plus four b is gonna equal one. Now we can immediately see that b is minus a. So the second equation becomes minus three a equals one. So I get a is a minus one third and b is a one third. Okay, so what does that mean for capital Y of S? Okay, so that's gonna be a one third times one minus e to the minus pi S times one over S squared plus one minus one over S squared plus four. I want you to notice that I decided to switch the order of the S squared plus one and S squared plus four because the A is the one that had the minus sign there. Okay, I'm gonna wanna take inverse Laplace transforms now, but I just wanna notice something about this S squared plus four term. Uh, if I really wanted that to be a sign, then I would wanna have a two there uh, because then that would be uh, easy to take the inverse Laplace transform of. So I'm gonna have to multiply by a one half out front to make that look nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna get a uh, one half times two over sine or s squared plus four. Okay, now last step is to find some inverse Laplace transforms. So y of t is going to be one third. That's gonna multiply everything. And then inverse Laplace transform of, we're gonna do one times one over s squared plus one, okay? And then we're gonna do one times that, uh, or sorry, we're gonna do the e to the minus pi s times this second, okay? So one times that is gonna give me a sine t. And then when I do the minus e to the minus pi s, I'm gonna get an h of t minus pi times sine of t minus pi. Okay, so that gives us the, uh, the first term there. And then similarly, okay, we wanna do a subtraction. So we're gonna do a minus one half, okay, one times the inverse Laplace transform of two over sine s squared plus four. So that's gonna be a sine 2t. And then I'm going to add a 1 half times h of t minus pi times the sine of 2 times t minus pi. 
And that is the solution to our differential equation. Okay, so let's go back one more time and look at the graph. So here I'm going to turn on, uh, this is our sine of x minus pi minus h of x minus pi times sine of x minus pi. Okay, so what you've got is, is a sine curve that, uh, that starts there and then... Um, Actually, that should have been a sine of x. Aha. Okay, so that's supposed to be a sine of x plus h of x minus pi times sine of x minus pi. And I hate to do this to you uh, in the middle of the recording, but I am now finally figuring out why I had a plus there. So I am going to change this back. Okay, so I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna go through and get rid of, um, or replace some of these minus signs with plus signs. It's not gonna be hard. There's a plus there, plus there, pluses on everything that's in front of the e to the minus pi s. A plus there, which means that whenever I have the h term, it's gotta have the same sign. So that's a plus there, and then this one's gonna be a minus there. 